It is an honor for Boutique Mice Business to have the opportunity to interview today Mr. Paul Cook at the forefront of the development of the production of next edition of EMEC 2021, the 32nd edition of the European Meeting and Events uh, Conference. Good afternoon, Mr. Cook. How are you today? I'm very good, and thank you for um, inviting me to, uh, to to talk and uh, to be with you. So, yeah, I'm delighted. It is it is it is a really really honor for us to have a person uh, with your experience with uh, of your experience within the execution of hybrid and online uh, events because EMEC goes online and I would please ask you to give us an introduction on um, the essential role the pivotal role that you place at the helm of EMEC 2021 production as well as Uh, how did you start your journey uh, within the leading meeting professional association in the world, MPI? Yeah, it was. Um, I, I've been uh, with MPI for some years, and I, I first um, I first joined, I first came across them uh, at a networking function in London, and basically I wanted to understand. I had some uh, insurance clients and I wanted to understand what their pain points were. They were all event planners, that was my market, but I needed to, to get into their head to, to really know what was driving them. And MPI was, was perfect for that because it was full of event planners and suppliers and faculty and students, and that was great. And that, what, I, what happened was that I ended up working on a committee, a volunteer committee, And then from there, I progressed. I became a membership chair. And shortly afterwards, unexpectedly, I was called um, in to be in, uh, president of the UK at very short notice because the lady that was due to do it got a career uh, offer that she couldn't refuse. So with five weeks notice, that was my preparation time for my year in office, <laughs> I, uh, I stepped up. And then, uh, lo and behold, that was year number 13, Of the, uh, of the UK chapter, so not being superstitious, I took it uh, on board, and then uh, in my year, in that year, we actually had the MEC in, uh, in London, so I was super lucky to be, to be able to be president at that time and to work with a wide variety of other people as well. So after I finished that year, uh, I then did some work on the Global Advisory Councils of uh, MPI. And I was always the kind of European voice that would be bringing over things into the States to say, you know, there would be a lot of people from States and there would be maybe me and somebody else from Europe. And we would always be like, hello, uh, what about us over there? Yes, <laughs> it was, I, I was never uh, always remembered for that. And, and that was good. That was great. So I got to see the organization from the lowest you know, level as being just somebody that was a member all the way through to the global advisory and it was great to see those different aspects of it and since then I, I then stood out the way of, of people uh, so they could get on and, and run the chapter and uh, I've been involved in doing some MPI com uh, committee um, nominations work so you know would I interview a few people for their roles you know coming up in the succession planning uh, side of things so I've done that And it was late last year in December when I first was approached by MPI to, uh, to get involved with MEC 2021. There have been some changes going on and it was going to change. It was going to be a hybrid event. And they asked me to, to come along and um, help with that. And I said, well, I think it's going to be more of a virtual event. We'll see, because there was a lot of change going on in Europe in terms of um, certain things that were, were happening. And so I, um, uh, I gave them a discussion document and that led to them appointing me in um, February to, to produce this event. So I'm, I couldn't be happier, actually. I'm, Congratulations, yeah, because it is an heart. important responsibility to, 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 yeah. to face a challenge of producing the most conceptual uh, event design by Europeans 
for Europeans. Now going digitally in these times where we are experiencing a transformation in mentality, in the society, in the technology, I would please ask you, uh, uh, Mr. Cook, especially with your background, being a writer, a, a researcher, a, a, a facilitator, and this is a very strategic work because what IMEC does is facilitate the change and allow people to gather and personalize that experience, taking away through that personalized experience of new concepts and, and a new uh, way of meeting within a platform with the backup of the leading association for meeting professionals in the world, it's to experience the experience, right? To experience the experience yeah. and uh, bring back a, a change individually and as a community. So please, sir, uh, why IMEC is a mass attend event for the European industry professionals? It's, it's always, in my opinion, it's always a, a must attend because every single year you've got different, uh, different Uh, people from uh, countries coming along and they're sharing ideas, they're sharing experience, they're sharing insights. And also we, we do talk a lot about things that don't work because we want to learn from that as well. So any MX that you go to is really useful for that. This one is um, valuable because what it's doing is it's showing people a different way of um, holding events. So for years and years, our traditional events have been very much in person. You go to a physical venue, you meet, you see everybody. Um, this is different because everybody's in their own uh, office or their own home and they're experiencing it, but they're also still able to, to get involved. So this is a different set of skills that you need to be able to put a virtual event on. It's not as though you, you're just running uh, an event. You are actually creating a program. So you have to put your head in a kind of TV mindset, a radio show producer mindset to, to get there because there are different things that you have to do um, to, to get there. And that means that what we're doing this year is we're showing uh, the members, we're, we're taking their ideas as well and their content and what the things that are keeping them up at night. And then we're taking all of that great content and we're turning it into something where They can see different ways in which it can be uh, pushed out in a, on a virtual uh, basis. And that I think is super exciting because that also means that we will get, there will be people that come that have never come across MPI before that say, oh, uh, hold on, who are these guys? Uh, this looks good. I'm going to get involved. And I think that also makes my heart sing. And it also means as well that the people that we've had as uh, previous presidents, pe previous people that have gone in the chapters before us to enable us to be where we are now, we can easily say to them, look, come on, pay the money and, and you know, you'll get a web link and then you'll be able to join us for the day. And that's dead easy. They don't have to travel. They don't have to book accommodation. They can uh, think about the sustainability uh, impact they're having, all of those kind of good things that go in. And I think this is one of those events where if people aren't used to knowing how to do one of these, great, they can get them to experience it. But also, I think that virtual events and hybrid events need to be alongside uh, in-person events so that we have a choice. We have a choice for all of our clients and we can say as event professionals, look, you don't need to do that one. Uh, in person, you can do it virtually, or actually, let's have that one in person and not virtually because it will work better. So what we're aiming to do in this uh, edition is to show people different applications and to get the thinking going, because if everybody believes that uh, a virtual meeting is a, is a Zoom meeting or a Teams meeting, then we're not doing our job properly. You know, there are lots of things that you can do in a virtual environment. And that's basically what we're, what we're going to be doing with this one. That so, is a, yeah. a, a absolutely takes, um, interesting, the way of innovation, and especially as you said, there is no, 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 no limits in terms of 
attendance. It is open. It is ac fully accessible. It doesn't sacrifice at all any of the components of high quality digital production, as well as it also encouraged to add elements such as uh, um, uh, nice entertainment, such as the, 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 the connections within members, such as the, the possibility to seek good partnerships, very, very valuable uh, 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 speakers and concepts that uh, has never been done before and this is uh, something that that you did last year on your previous edition within Seville for example you as MPI uh, a signature event in the European market always come with the wow factor meaning no one can really expect what is gonna happen because for for maybe teaching the learning, yeah. the learning sessions to teach um, a stress management or leadership skills. There is no need to be in a conference room anymore. There is so many uh, creative ways to, to get involvement, to get uh, uh, members and non-members in this case uh, uh, to add value and to cooperate and, and personalize the whole individual and, and community uh, uh, experience. And at the end of the day, it is the incubator of the innovation that can be transferable and can be uh, uh, um, maximizing all these uh, uh, digital and online innovating, inspiring tools that MP MPI is currently de de developing uh, to keep on um, advocating and uh, standing up for our industry. Uh, what influential uh, position, pos position do you think that uh, this EMEC uh, special edition uh, will have? What would be the biggest change that you would like uh, uh, to be implemented to continue keeping ahead as a benchmark uh, within the, the European market, sir? Well, I, I think um, to keep pushing those boundaries, that's great, to, to show that, you know, there are more options than uh, events that we've done in the past. So these are other things that we can bring to, to our clients and also to to really get closer to partners and their responses um, because there's a lot more that you can do with some of this content because you can have the content, you don't lose it, you can put it into post-event uh, content which you can package up and you can make as products. So there's, there's more that you can do. It's easier in many respects to, to actually package up virtual um, uh, content uh, and use that and keep that going forward than it is at, say, some uh, in-person events. But I think what we're, what we're really seeking to do with this one is to say to people, look, it's down to us now. We've had a, a really tough year. Uh, we've had a year when all sorts of things have gone wrong. But now, enough. Now is time for you to actually take control of where you want to be uh, and also help us shape where this event sector is going, but more than that, where the events discipline is going, because we do a huge amount of things as event professionals. We're looking after data, personal security, we're looking after people's diets, we're looking after disability issues, we're doing all of these things. And now we're also um, dealing with the public health of a lot of people. So it's hugely complex. And I think this one is all about really saying to people that is this a space that you still want to be in and they'll say yes of course it is and then okay so how are we going to be ready for when uh in-person events come back or when we need to adapt because if people are saying look we'll just follow the government guidelines that's what we're going to do it's not enough it's not tested enough and these are the kind of debates and discussions that we're going to have because we want to be able to really drill into so where is it working in the world right now where are people holding really safe events that give um, customers, give clients, give corporates the idea that they can come and they can have their staff and they're going to be, you know, they're not going to be affected. They are going to be um, secure. And that's where we need to get to with, with 
of that. But we also need to keep driving these other propositions that we've got with virtual and hybrid events, because I feel very much that hybrid events are going to be the next phase, if you like. We've had virtual now for about, uh, well, at least the last 15 months. And it's been one of those things that some people haven't liked, um, some people have loved. But hybrid events are going to become more and more valuable. And I think we need to start demonstrating those. Simply because if you if you have an in-person event and, and you don't invite anybody else virtually, then you're saying goodbye to all of those people that have been your strong supporters for the last year. And I just don't think once people have a taste of being able to go to an event virtually as well, then they're still going to want that in the future. I don't see that disappearing. And that, that's where I think we need to be shifting the, um, the, the headspace and the, the thinking and the thought process going on there. So the other thing that I'm doing is I'm bringing in, a, um, uh, bringing in people from outside of the sector. So people that are not in events, not in hospitality, not in any of those things, and saying to them, look, what do you actually need? What do you need right now from people that offer you event services? What do you need from planners? Or, or, or don't you need them? Because I don't think we've had a really strong reality look at ourselves for, for maybe forever. I mean, who knows? But I think that we can, as, as event people, we can get um, maybe caught up a little bit in, you know, we've got all of this to offer. But I want to know, is that what businesses offer? Is that what far financial companies want? Is that what pharmaceutical companies need? Is that what you know people in construction need when we're putting on or science and technology when we're putting on events for them? Because what we're doing is we're enabling those uh, industries to go forward through our you know our very good uh, ways of designing events. And so we very much enable, and I just want to test that as well. So there's a couple of things going on there. It's like our relevant our relevance to a wider industry and also about you as the individual coming along and really saying okay yeah i am really understand all of the issues uh, and also i'm in charge of where i want to take my career so it may be as an example that you have uh, you've been a, say say you've been a uh, an event planner you've been in person and you love the logistics you love all the detail, you love all the spreadsheets, you love all of that kind of thing, and you've really got a focused eye on that. But you think, hold on, um, we're not going to be able to do it, you know, there's going to be fierce competition, uh, I don't see my kind of role being, being there because I think it's going to change. What you might want to do is you might want to take all of those transferable skills and go across and be in, uh, maybe you start doing data analytics to, to you know to show companies well what's going on because you've got that detail head and you could do some of these things or you could work with say some production companies where you've got schedules you've got people needing to come in there's a lot of logistics going. so what we want to do is not you know we don't have all the answers we're never going to have those answers but we are going to create that forum where it says why don't we discuss this why don't you have a think about this and then the whole idea is that the you know the theme of this particular one is is make your future. So we want to to help people on their individual journeys. I'll stop stop talking. About that, that no, that, that was exactly the question I was going to ask you right now because as you said, we are all learning, but most important events and, and high top quality events as the ones are produced by the leading association of meeting professionals in the world are some sort of hybrid and digital connections. This is uh, a, an important uh, concurrent uh, digital program and components that has been applied for the first time during the World Education uh, uh, Congress in Texas, and it was very successful. Now we're going to take it to the European markets, and we are going to uh, use it as the uh, lab to experiment within the Europeans uh, 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 members and, and, and those joining the, uh, the digital, the EMEC digital edition and having a new theme. Previously was change the game, 
um, uh, push your boundaries, and this one is make your future. Please explain that uh, further, Mr. Cook. Okay, so make the future. We're, we're saying that the response is down to individuals, uh, MPI, individual based membership. So you, you already join with an idea that you want to progress because that's why people become members because they want to learn more. They often want to learn more so that they can put that in their uh, personal, professional life, or they want to learn or they want to develop because they've got business connections and they want to develop those. So it's very much about. Okay, you want to come to this conference. We're going to give you um, ideas. We're going to give you um, some some things that you can immediately take away. So there'll, there'll be some practical takeaways that they can apply right there, right then, no problem. But then also, we're going to have some deeper dive discussions where we really think about, okay, what is it that we're, we're doing? What, what am I actually doing as an individual as well? So... The way that we're going to run it is there are going to be two uh, two channels. One is going to be on uh, personal development. One's going to be on business development. And you can flick between each. It doesn't matter. There'll be some sessions that are uh, going to be uh, across for everybody. So like the opening session, the closing session, the link up with Las Vegas, all that kind of thing, and the WEC. But ultimately, it's down to you. You've got the choice of where you want to go, where you want to spend your time. And what we're really saying is that, you know, we can we can uh, blame other people for where we are, but we feel that this is really the time now to to get ready and to be prepared for when events do become more prevalent, where there are more uh, opening of territories where people are more vaccinated. And therefore, there is more confidence in some of the governments across the globe to say, "Yeah, okay, let's let's hold, you know, other events now, and let's um, let's do them on a on a bigger scale." But the job of the event professional is is not just to say, "Okay, look, we're open for business. Come in, Mr. Brian. Um, we're all ready for you." It's also to hold their hand, to virtually hold their hand, and to make sure that we take them on that journey with us and say, look, we're going to put, be putting this event on. It is safe for you to come. This is what we do. This is how we do it. This is what we've tested. And it's to have that discussion. So we're actually making, uh, through this, people to think more strategically as well. So event planners uh, and others can be very good tactically, operationally. I've got a list, tick, tick list of things to do. And that's great because we all need that. But I think also we're looking to expand their thinking to be, why are we doing this and how am I impacting and how can I really help my client here? Because if we're not doing that, then we will lose, everybody will lose it, um, at the ultimately at the end because we won't be helping clients now. So it's about getting people ready, um, really ready. And tuned, and really thinking of some of the, some of the issues that are coming down the pipe, not just about dealing with with health, but also the climate change, the um, all of the things that go on with uh, uh, pollution across the globe as well, and what we're doing there, and how we might need to be thinking in a different way in terms of our partnerships and what that means um, as well for us. So, I think everybody has been, you know, pretty much thrown around since last year because everything has been turned upside down and this is the conference where we say okay right where are we starting from let's go forward now is the time so exactly and you know as you well said when when people when people goes to an event it doesn't matter if it's a face-to-face -face. and as you said previously mr cook there is now going to be so much difference uh, uh, of of uh, uh, attending to an event in person or attending to an online or digital or hybrid event why because at the end of the day why meeting planners and 
and, and, and meeting professionals who attend to those events, conference and, and exhibitions. They want to meet, they want to connect, they want to learn and they want to grow professionally and they want to take, they want to go home with take, take ways that makes them uh, change as much as is changing the profession. So it is uh, uh, important uh, that that basically this uh, new event uh, will open the door, making it accessible, having much more participation and having the possibility to connect, to interact, to uh, strength partnerships and most specifically, once again, it's uh, done with for and by Europeans. Uh, what uh, would you hide like at this present moment, your competitive advantages of your European chapter? What is the hard work that you are all doing together in order to take this conference to the next level and encourage the confidence, the leadership skills and the trust that is needed in order to go back on track uh, uh, within uh, the next uh, few months uh, to carry on successfully and, and be fearless and, and have the confidence of knowing that if events like IMEC will go digital, it's because there is potential. If they are linking it now with the world, Europe and the world is one now. The That's connections right. are going to be worldwide the partnerships are going to be more 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 chances to to increase everything is increasing so we are talking about strengths we are talking about added value and we are talking just about competitive advantages uh, towards the next edition of your next European meeting and event conference. So, sir, let's talk a little bit, please, about the importance of the chapters, the European chapters, the, 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 the people able to, to, to assist in the organization or, or, or cooperation to make this next event the most successful as ever has been before. Yeah, absolutely. So they are they're critical because without uh, without uh, people on the ground that are uh, aware of all of the issues that are going on, we wouldn't know. We wouldn't know if we were giving the right content, if we were even answering the questions that they need. So, you know, I go back to, to the journey that I had right at the start, which was, okay, start as a member, find out what people wanted, and we would go around and we would we would highlight those those issues. And what we've got now is that the exact same thing going on. So we've got all of the all of the European chapters have been tasked to come back and to basically say what it is, what are their what are their issues uh, that they've got, um, but also what are the issues of the members and the wider community because we want those. We want to get those and we want to, to then be able to work out what are the key things that are common because there will be some things that are common, and how are we going to address those? And we, so we're in discussion with all of the chapters uh, in Europe to find out exactly what that is. Um, they're all working away, and I know this because they keep emailing me, <laughs> which is great. So, you know, they're still volunteers, right? So they're still, it's in their time, but for their members, and, and it's great to, uh, to encourage that. And what, I'm, what we're doing, what you know, what, what we're really doing is getting the different chapters to to be working together. So if you are, um, it, it can be easy sometimes to just say, right, I'm in this chapter or I'm in that one, I'm in this country or I'm in that one. What I'm doing is I'm mixing it all up. So we're getting the collaboration and those ideas going between different, different pockets of different chapters. So, you know, in the way that a... Um, you put a jigsaw together, you've got all of these pieces and you basically take all of these pieces and you, you look at the picture and you think, okay, that's what it's supposed to look like. What we've got is we've got all of the chapters bringing all of these pieces plus other people. We have a, an outline uh, of what it might look like. We know the overall theme, but we don't have that picture yet. And the reason we don't have that is because we need it to come from these guys. 
we need it to come from the membership because then what will happen is we will get more more people will come along because they're interested in what we're talking about and what's being provided for them they will encourage other people to come the wider community will then say wow look at this going on over here and so they are effectively creating we are creating this picture together and that's to me is really interesting because if you if you don't know what people want then you're going to go in and you're going to deliver what you think they want and you're going to do that uh, in a leadership role with some fairly clear ideas so no it doesn't work this doesn't work that doesn't work and i've been on many a, a committee uh, many a chapter meeting where i heard people say oh yeah we, we tried that like, three years ago and it didn't work so we're never going to do it again and i used to say well hold on just because it didn't work then could mean it wasn't the right time why don't we have a look at it now why don't we try things now your past so doesn't condition your future yeah, right processes yeah absolutely spot on because otherwise you're always going to be you're always going to be tied to that past of thinking okay well it didn't work once and i had a complaint and it wasn't good so therefore we're never going to do it again which is nonsense and also you know we've got experience of people uh, that have been in the chapters before so let's tap into that as well so i'm encouraging the Uh, the chapters to also go to their, their past people and say, okay, so what, what's your issues now? And it doesn't matter if they were really good at what they did in their, their uh, roles because everything is, has been changed. So there are going to be issues that they've got as well. So what does a senior event planner feel right now? How does, how does that senior planner feel coming up to maybe a new graduate that's coming out with a qualification? that understands digital. So we've got this whole different dynamic happening all the time, which is why it's super important to tap into people and find out what they want and how they want it as well, you know, do it in, in what form. And then what I will do is take all of that and look at it and then we'll start to see, well, how do we make this piece? Because some things we won't be able to do, some things we will. Some things we will say, okay, look, let's do that at the next demic. Well, let's do that in your own individual chapter meeting. But what we're, what we're finding out is we're getting a lot of detail about um, what people are after. And that's really good for us to have as data points. And then, of course, we, you know, linking up with, with WEC, you know, there might be some, some options there. If there is something that's really popular across the pond, you know, on both sides, well, let's do a joint session together. So there's all sorts of ways that this can go. So of interacting, generating an impact that at the end of the day, that's exactly what MPI does. And that's why they have appointed you, Mr. Cook, to be at the forefront of the development of the production of the next EMEC. They uh, customize the, um, the, the journey. They adapt it, yeah. individualize And most specifically, they create the, the, the impact, they generate the impact. So if we think about the most innovative concepts currently available in the market, if we talk about the importance of having a professional such as yourself driving the execution, implementing the uh, um, digital uh, tools and experience together with um, what you just uh, mentioned to, 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 to have the opportunity of um, cooperating within two different uh, worldwide uh, uh, award winners events, that would be simply um, a very, very successful platform. It's going to be an opportunity to collaborate, to generate um, a, a new uh, experience and most importantly to make people enjoy while learning, networking and, um, and, and growing. So, uh, Mr. Cook, thank you very much for, for, for your time, for, for all the, the, the supplements that you are going to add to the current editions that has been held 
um, within uh, the European market. And most importantly, um, would you like to send an encouraging message uh, to the European meeting and, and event professionals how, how they can uh, uh, join this magnificent um, next one-stop spot? One stop platform where the world will be accessing together with the best professionals within the industry, anticipating uh, and most importantly, developing together. So, sir, please uh, let's send a, um, a, an important uh, message of why people should be joining the EMEC, the MPI family, and being part of such an important, the world's leading international network for meeting professionals. Well, I think uh, why they should is because there is just so much on, on offer in, in terms of joining the organization anyway as well. But, and that comes from being able to share experiences and talk to people that understand you that, that really know what you're doing because not everybody does you know it can be quite lonely being um, an, an event planner so it's, it's basically to to join in and tap into this this kind of um uh network of people that, that just help each other um they help them through connections they help them through ideas they help them through learning uh, they embrace everybody so we've got People at a very senior level, we've got students at another level, we've got faculty in the middle. So everybody is in this ecosystem of the event sector. And if you are feeling, or if anybody's been feeling not sure where to go, don't know what to do, then join the event. If anybody's feeling, I really need to uh, know more about what's going on, then join. And if you're just feeling, I could do with some, you know, just being able to not feel alone then join as well. I think there are three kind of key reasons there. And, and really it is very accessible. All you need is a simple web link and then you just pay the small admission fee and that's it. And then you get this amazing content. And the thing is that whilst the whilst the, uh, the price is, is really low, the value is massive. So the value is like through the roof because we are curating every single piece of this. So there's no fluff, there's no extra uh, extra words being used. And even when it comes to sponsors and partners and other people, we are curating what's going on with them. So it's all completely ducked out because we're making a program. And, you know, we're making a virtual production that okay. is different to the rest. And um, <laughs> hopefully that's uh, <laughs> enough reasons. But I think you find people that you, you make lifelong friendships with, uh, you never forget um, a, a body such as MPI because it just is, uh, yeah, it, it just has so many different things to offer. So whether it's education, whether it's networking, whether it's just hanging out with people, whether it's learning what's new, you know, I could go on, but seriously, there are so many different reasons why you need to be involved in this, in this body. And uh, as you said, it's affordable, it's accessible. Yes. It's um, um, definitely the, 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 the event to join the next 15th of June. IMEC yes. goes uh, digital and Mr. Paul Cook is at the forefront of the development of the production. So we will be providing further updates. Thank you very much for your wise words. We will be um, transcribing and informing our members of the latest uh, updates as well as obviously to encourage the international, mainly the European uh, MICE community to, 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 to get on board and, and experience uh, the experience, right? So, thank you very much for your time, Mr. Cook. Um, anything you, anything else you would like to add? No, I, I just, I just wanted to make sure that you have what you need. Um, so, you know, hopefully, you, you have from this discussion uh, what what's uh, useful to you. Uh, and if there are other things that you think of that you want uh, comment on, then just let me know. I'm very happy to. Uh, talk anytime. You know? Absolutely, sir. Thank you very much.